Good morning. Today we'll go more about to understand the environment management system. As we discussed earlier in the previous session, we came to know more about the benefits of ISO 14001, also known as the environment management system, and we came to know more about the Plan Do Check Act. So today we talk about the requirements of the environment management system. So the main first requirement of an environment management system is the formation of an environment policy. So now this environment policy is like say a statement which is shows a proof from your organization to your stakeholders and the public that you want to do certain steps, you want to take certain steps, certain measures to protect the environment. So basically it shows that you are taking certain measures for continual improvement so that you protect the environment at the same time your quality remains the same. Okay, so what is it? It is first your policy, it has to be appropriate to your organization. So all the processes, the different procedures, the services which are being conducted by your organization, it is going to be specific to that. Okay, it shows as I mentioned earlier that it's a continual improvement towards the environment and it also helps to prevent your pollution. So by making this policy, you show that you will be taking certain steps, certain measures to protect the environment and to prevent pollution. It's like a continual improvement. Okay, now along with it, you also show that you are going to abide with all the legal and regulatory requirements. So all the laws which are given by the government which you have to follow regarding the pollution, you show that with the help of this policy that you will be following all these laws. That all these laws, all the permissible limits which is stated by the laws, all of these will be followed by you and you won't step above the permissible limits. So this is another thing your policy will help. It will help you to show to the other stakeholders and other industries that you are taking all these measures to control and prevent the pollution and at the same time the quality of your products remain the same okay so along with this with your policies and uh, your uh, commitment towards the environment you also have to have certain environmental objectives and targets these will be discussed in detail in another session but now just to give you a brief information objectives and targets are certain parameters which are set by you which is used as a marking scale to show that you're conducting all these steps towards the prevention of pollution and the betterment of the environment at the same time the quality of the entire process and your services are remain unchanged so what you're saying is that your processes and activities are being followed everything is being kept the same only you're doing it at certain ways in which you're not harming the environment so it's a really good tool to show that you're following the steps towards the betterment of the environment as these uh, objectives and targets they have to be monitored over a period of time so you get to see an actual measure of how much of improvement you've been doing towards the betterment of the environment okay so this is in brief is your environment policy now you talk about your continual your uh, continual improvement towards the betterment of the environment and the prevention of pollution then you talk about your objectives and targets you also talk about your legal requirements so you'll be uh, following all the stated norms and also keeping to all the permissible limits and so this in short is a document which is a, a statement from you towards your stakeholders to show how you're going to upkeep and uphold the entire environment and this has to be communicated to all it has to be documented and it has to be placed everywhere in your organization so not only you that is the top management but also all your employees and all the other people who work there the contractors your stakeholders all of them will come to know about your entire policy and what are the steps which are going to be undertaken by you to protect the environment so this is in brief your environment policy now the next step we talk about is something called the environment aspects and impacts so aspects are all the activities or different services which have been conducted by your uh, by your organization and the impacts 
are whatever the impacts caused by those aspects that is the activities and services which is being conducted by your environment and by your organization onto the environment so basically you're trying to find out all the impacts of all the activities and services which has been conducted by you so to have your uh, to understand your entire activities and impacts first what you do is you identify all the services which are being conducted by you and then with the help of a rating which we will provide which is basically you have to uh, find out if you take an activity then you find out the, the scale of the, of the activity then the occurrence how many times are activities occurring in a day and you talk about the impact on it on the environment whether it's going to cause any pollution air pollution sound pollution water pollution noise pollution and then you talk about the uh, control is there any valuable regular fixed control measures to it if any human controls are required so you talk about all of these so these are different ratings which you use to score your activities and impacts and once you score your activities your and impacts with the help of a rating which once again will be provided by us you will come to know whether your activities or impacts are significant or not significant means whether they are more than 100 and between 300 and high is whether they are 300 and non significant whether they are less than 100 so this is a scale which we use so currently once you do your entire assessment of your activities and impacts then with the help of the scale using the different parameters of frequency occurrence impact the control available and whether there are any legal regulatory requirements involved whether any human intervention is involved on the basis of these parameters you can help and see and judge whether your activities and impacts are significant non significant or highly significant so this is in brief your environment aspect and impact which basically is an assessment of all the activities and services which is being conducted by an organization and the impact of these activities and services on the environment and on the last topic for today is talking about your legal requirements So you must be knowing of all the different legal requirements and regulatory laws which are applicable for you and for environment. So take our country as an example. We have the Water Act, we have the Air Act, we have the Water Cess Act, and then we have the Batteries Act, we have the Electricity Act, we've got the uh, Motor Vehicle Act, we've got so many other acts. So depending on the scale of your organization and the scope, what exactly do you do? So there are different regulatory laws which are applicable for you. So according up to your organization and your scope and whatever laws are applicable to you, we make a legal register. So this legal register contains a list of all the laws, which basically means you have the laws, the applicable uh, law number, and the definition of the law, and what part of the law is applicable to your environment. Uh, is applicable to the environment and to your organization all of this is mentioned in one single document and next to it there will be a column mentioned whether it is being implemented by you whether the control measures are available in your organization or not so this is in one document in short you will come to know all the legal requirements required by you whatever part of the legal requirement which is applicable to you whatever control measures required and whether you are implementing this control measures so all of this is mentioned in the legal and regulatory requirements so to have a brief recap today we spoke about the environment policy we will come to know that it has to be an a uh, statement for continual improvement towards the environment and to decrease the pollution and then it talks about your environmental objectives and targets which will be discussed in the next session then it talks about your uh, it's like a statement from you towards the stakeholders and contractors that you'll be prevent uh, helping to save the environment and uh, along with it it has to be made available to all displayed everywhere and if required it has to be shown to the stakeholders so that's your environmental policy in short then we came to the environmental aspects and impacts where we know that the aspects and impacts are all the different processes the services which are being conducted by our organization and the impact is the impact of those processes services on the environment so this is in short your environmental aspect and impact where we discuss also how we assess it on the different parameters of frequency the occurrence the scale 
the free, uh, the there is any control protect uh, control uh, procedures in place any legal requirements applicable whether any human intervention is required so these are the different as uh, parameters we which we use to assess and then along after this assessment we have to rate them along the scale of whether it is significant highly significant or not significant at all where highly significant will be between the scale of a 100 to 300 and above and significant is between 100 to 300 and non significant is below 100 so and then after this we also discuss about the legal requirements that is all the applicable laws given by the government which is applicable to you and the scope of your organization if we one document where in all the laws are mentioned and the applicable law numbers or all rules whatever part of these rules and laws applicable to you and whether you're conforming to those rules and laws and whether any control measures are in place so this is in brief about the environment management system now the first three main points about the environmental policy the object or the activities and impacts and the environmental legal requirements are mentioned the next step that is the environmental objectives and targets will be covered in the next session thank you